The Enochian Communications System of the Pythagorean Order of Death The Enochian Communication System, or ECS for short, is what allows telepaths to communicate instantly even at opposite ends of the globe. In this lecture, I shall explain how. Let us begin with Johannes Kepler. 1571 to 1630, late Dutch contemporary of the Englishman John D. Kepler studied the five regular solids that can be formed from the three regular polygons, the so-called Platonic solids, as well as the thirteen Archimedean solids formed by truncating the sides or edges and snubbing the corners of the five regular solids. Kepler used his knowledge of these geometries to plot maps, such as this, and to study astronomy, which we will discuss shortly. The geometry Kepler used for his cartography was elementary arcs depicting the split globe, it having only recently been rediscovered that the world was round. However, there were, even at that time, far more sophisticated methods of plotting courses on maps, but not in Europe. In the Turkish Ottoman Empire and Moorish Spain, they preserved maps such as the Piri Reis map that not only plotted more complex geometric methods of navigation, but also seemed to depict an unglaciated Antarctica. Of course, we all know by now that not all maps are created equal. Here we see the ten regions that the 50 United States are divided into by the Federal Emergency Management Agency. FEMA for short. It is widely known that many state parks and native tribal lands were gifted by the federal government of the U.S. to the United Nations and that the U.N. turned these properties over to be managed by FEMA. Here we see a map of the United States of America depicting the exact locations of all, both confirmed and speculated, deep underground military bases, or DUMS for short built on these national properties. Here we see the rectangular hallway of the Swedish Navy's Moscow base, which was built between 1950 and 1969. Compare this rectangular hallway to the cylindrical design of the tunnel boring machines, TBMs or moles for short, supposedly used to construct the dumbs in the U.S. These have been used to build large underground facilities, such as those at the Grimsel test site in Bern, Switzerland, and the Yucca Mountain, Nevada repositories for nuclear waste storage. Comparing the U.S. map of such nuclear waste disposal sites and the supposed locations of DUMS may shed new light on research into the dual use of such facilities. Likewise, for a global map of suspected dumbs and this map showing the countries hosting CIA black sites used during George W. Bush's extraordinary rendition program for hiding the torture of POWs in Bush's self-proclaimed war on terror. The desire for dumbs dates back to pre-Nazi Germany and the concept of Agartha, or the Hollow Earth theory. However, to return our attention to maps as they relate to the ECS, we must lastly consider the contribution to cartography of Richard Buckminster Fuller, who invented the Dymaxion projection map to prove his discovery that the seven continental tectonic plates can be graphed according to the geometry of the Cuoctahedron, one of the thirteen Archimedean solids. Fuller also discovered this shape possessed a form of what he called tensegrity that allowed it to fold in on itself with a twisting motion, which Bucky called the jitterbug effect. When the cube octahedron is graphed onto a sphere, it looks like three great arcs surrounding a cube, and Chuck Hoberman, a modern inventor, discovered this sphere-mapped shape mimics the expanding and contractibility of Fuller's tensegrity structures. In this toy, based on Hoberman's designs, we can see the two types of hinges. Those of the cube aspect are square, 
connecting four intersecting legs, and those of the octahedron are triangular, connecting three intersecting legs. But what does all this have to do with the map of our planet? Lost sciences describe telluric currents of orgone energy connected in ley lines like the 20 meridians of Reiki and Ayurveda connecting the nerve centers in the extremities to the seven ganglii and plexi of nerve clusters along the spine, the so-called chakras. These ley lines often follow underground rivers and wherever they intersect are to be found ancient monuments. The alignments of these geoglyphs completes a pattern alike Fuller's Dymaxion projection map that is unique from the regular system of latitudes and longitudes. What can be learned from the projection of the cube octahedron onto the electromagnetic field surrounding planet Earth? From 1958 to 1970, Charles Hapgood proposed that the geographic location for the axis around which our planet rotates had been in no less than four different places over the last 80,000 years. The location of the magnetic poles of Earth's electrical field are still in motion to this day, and have moved thousands of miles in the past hundred years alone. The complete combination of the intersections and cuboctahedronal field lines of Earth's electromagnetic field comprises what we call today the Enochian Communications System, so named for Enoch, who knew of this science from before the end of the last ice age and the glaciation of Antarctica, when many of the most ancient geoglyphs were aligned according to this pattern, but offset to the past location of the geographic poles. But this is only the surface of the inner core of the Enochian Communications System, the electromagnetic field of planet Earth. To understand how this field allows international telepathic communication, we must understand also how the system of our ego, psyche, or mind works. Maurice Cornelius Escher, 1898 to 1972, came the closest to expressing this system in art during the 20th century. Like Kepler, some 300 years before, he studied the framework of the platonic solids in order to see how they could be nested inside one another. Escher's work with infinitely limiting tessellation patterns paved the way for work with chaos theory, fractals, and strange attractors. Much of this geometric science has been forwarded toward micro-engineering with intended use in telecommunications technology. Here we may see some of the first images by 21st century geometers to study spherical mapping of infinitely limiting tessellations. This type of electromagnetic lattice surrounds the Earth, and it is through this we can communicate to one another, even at vast distances, using mind alone. The electromagnetic field of Earth also acts as a buffer for our planet against stellar and interstellar cosmic radiation. The nearest star, our Sun, provides the most source for such radiation, and its own electromagnetic field is cyclically linked to that of our own planet, Earth, as well as those of the other planets in our solar system. As the sun rotates, its longitudinal field lines between its poles gradually coil up into latitudinal orientation, the direction of rotation of which is split along the equator. Occasionally these field lines overlap one another, and the result are the flares and prominences of the so-called sunspot cycle. Although little known, it is widely understood that the sunspot cycle of our star's coiling electromagnetic field lines is timed to directly synchronize in its peak with the realignment of the magnetic and geographical poles of our own planet. Likewise, we see polar weather effects occurring on all the other planets in our solar system that may be explained by this process, such as the dual north polar cyclones of Venus, the thawing and freezing of the north and south poles of Mars, the apparent conflagration of impacts on the north and south poles of Earth's moon, 
the recent appearance of auroras in the north and south poles of Jupiter, and the as of yet unexplained presence of regular hexagons in the weather patterns of both the north and south poles of Saturn. These phenomena all correspond to the theory of Earth's own electromagnetic field being mapped as a cuboctahedron affected in harmony with the other planetary and stellar electromagnetic fields. Johannes Kepler also studied astronomy and innovated on Copernican heliocentrism by proposing not only the now proven law of variant velocities in an elliptical orbit, but also in his work Harmonia Mundi, the music of the spheres, attempted to apply the nesting or embedding of the platonic solids within one another as a method of determining the distances of the planet's orbits from the Sun. Modern artist Paul Laffoley, in his work Geochrome, has presented an alternative application of the regular polygons to the influences of the planets, but it remains essentially similar to the thinking of Kepler's solids embedded orbital model. However, the Enochian Communications System, or ECS for short, that is used by Pythagorean telepaths to communicate globally is based on the concept of the hypercube, or one cube nested inside another, combined with the hypersphere, or one sphere at the core of another. The outer cubical element of the ECS is comprised of, in essence, the four watchtowers of John Dee's Enochian system. These contain 156 cells each, and each cell contains a letter. Each of these letters occurs in a pattern across 30 airs, or ethers, that surround Earth. Each seven-letter sigil thus also corresponds to a location on the surface of the Earth. Such is the sum and substance of the Enochian communication system as it is known today. The outer cube is tessellated just as the outer sphere, and the twin cubes of the tesseract have the same area, just as the tessellations mapped on the surface of the torus merely appear to taper off to infinity around its edges. In past lectures, I have discussed the origins and methods of constructing the Enochian system of John Dee, as it was used in the Golden Dawn cult. In future lectures, I will discuss the extension of this system as used as a lattice to relate all the elder methods of recollecting cosmic cyclical patterns, from the I Ching to the Mayan calendar, all combined into a single form I call the Atlantean calendar.